This morning I'm talking about the culture of beauty. I wonder how many people have ever attended a lecture <laughs> about the culture, culture of beauty, maybe in an art school, perhaps. There's no place in the universe where beauty does not exist. If you engage in research on the subject of beauty, you're going to learn that great cultures were the result of the labor of men and women who were dedicated to beauty. Just pause for a moment and think of all the interviews of you've observed and listened to over the years. What is your life purpose? What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to dedicate your life to? How many people in today's society say that they are going to dedicate their lives to beauty? So we're planting a seed of an idea this morning. That if you're still in the, let's say in your, your 30s and you're still trying to think about what you want to make your life to be, consider dedicating your life to beauty. Great leaders who appreciated beauty sponsored many artists. Here's an idea. They sponsored many artists and provided them with money, places to live, studios, and needed materials to help them create their masterpieces. What a magnificent idea. It's a, it's a idea that can create an environment that is very different from what society today is used to, truly. Under the influence of admirers of beauty, great music, drama, dance, architecture, philosophy, and wisdom, under the influence of these admirers, all of these beautiful concepts were developed and various schools were founded in order to orchestrate humanity to strive toward beauty. It is due to such efforts that not only did human relations improve, but the overall general health was improved as well. The cultivation of the concept of beauty is not only beautiful for our body, health, and relationships, but it also creates those conditions in which the human heart, human mind, human spirit unfolds and develops. Beauty attracts not only the forces of light, wisdom and love, but also the forces of reconstruction, regeneration, and creativity. This is what beauty does, the cultivation of beauty. Think about beauty in your family. You know, beauty has a particular kind of rhythm. Ugliness also has a rhythm but it is a rhythm in contradiction to the rhythm of beauty. If you're a musician, you know that rhythm has power. That power manifests the composer's music in such a way that it can, even, it can awaken the soul, it can broaden your consciousness, it can instill an influence in yourself that influences your family, that influences 
your community, your country, the universe in ways that we never could imagine the culture of beauty will do that. So our challenge today in today's world is to remember the culture of beauty, how to build a culture of beauty, first within ourselves, then within our family. How do you build a culture of beauty? By creating a rhythm that attracts the elements, the components of beauty into your day-to-day -day conversations, into the way you decorate your home, the outside of your home, the street that you live on, you were building this culture of in, this culture or environment of beauty. We can dedicate part of our lives to building such a culture. So when you say there's so much trauma, so much ugliness going on in the world today, I don't know what to do. I want to give up. Well, start with building a culture of beauty. See, you're with yourself, your family, your home, your group. Beauty, I'm going to repeat this, beauty attracts not only the forces of light, wisdom, and love, but also the forces of reconstruction, regeneration, and creativity. I was just thinking about the reconstruction that's going on out in front of <laughs> the house, <clears throat> our other center over in Eastwood Drive. These huge bulldozers, these medium-sized bulldozers, small trucks, large trucks, cars, they all are residing now right in front of the house. <laughs> <laughs> and up the street and down and over here, Monday through Friday. And all I can do to keep from being irritated <laughs> is to think what the result is going to be. We're going to finally have a beautiful street. We don't know when. <laughs> but it's so, it's so ugly right now. It's so ugly. It's horrible. We have to drive about another 10 minutes to get to our destination because we can't go straight from A to B. We have to go from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way around <laughs> to get back to B. Anyway, so I keep envisioning that this is going to be worth it. Reconstruction. So when we look at our lives and say, how am I going to build a culture of beauty in my thinking, in my heart, in my home, with my children, with my friends. Reconstruction takes time. It may take a breaking up of the old, reconstructing what the present environment is to turn it into something of beauty. So it's going to take time to do that. And then, the recognition, the realization that we are going to receive help because we're attracting the forces of light. Right. The East, the East looks at the archetypal, archetypal world and says, look, this world exists in the mind of God. It's beautiful, it's truth. Let's go there. This is the East. And Westerners will say, okay, Let's build it here on earth. Daniel Anton, who was the president and executive director of the Rourke Museum and Agni Yoga Society for many years, he said, I have learned to see beauty in this way. There are religions and cultures that teach the people that this planet is a veil of tears a field of sin and suffering, a place in which our fortitude is tested in the most painful and destructive ways. He said this view sees paradise 
as something that cannot be on earth, something that one escapes to or is rewarded with after leaving this veil of tears. Other religions, he says, teach other ways, saying in the book of Genesis, God gives that paradise to Adam and Eve right here on earth. But then they committed a great sin and were ejected into that world of suffering, which is described vividly. He said Western religions and some others want to build paradise once again on earth to give back to God what he gave to us, to return to his original plan by mirroring the perfection of paradise right here. God made everything, therefore everything must exist in a state of beauty. And if it is not, that is our doing, and we can fix it. A real, he wrote, a real Western can-do attitude. <laughs> Agni Yoga explains that beauty is a means to come in contact with superhuman spheres. The Greeks created not only the most beautiful bodies, but also the most refined philosophy and literature and architecture and sculpture and they prepared the mind for the science of the future. In ancient temples, the greatest subject was beauty. Mystery temples in Greece, mystery temples in Egypt, mystery temples in South America, in England, and in India, in Persia, were the temples where beauty was worshiped. The Hierophant was beauty. The path of initiation was beauty, and the traveler on that path was transforming into beauty. The teachings that survived through all the tribulations and barbarism of the ages bear on their helmets the signs of beauty. The initiation into mysteries were gradient penetration into beauty. Beauty was revealed gradually and slowly. This is very interesting to me and so vital for us to understand that beauty was revealed gradually and slowly to make a neophyte absorb it and to fuse with it. When a degree of absorption of beauty and fusion with it was achieved, then the person was called a first degree initiate. So that word reconstruction, he is now taking on a broader meaning, meaning that we start our life and a sense of who we are and a sense of the direction that we want our life to take us. But that's almost a shell of an idea. We don't know how to create a foundation that will launch us into a direction of beauty, a beauty that will reconstruct the karma of many, many past life incarnations. And of course, I'm not, I'm, this would be the karma of, of uh, where we have to pay our debts. So reconstruction, I think, also requires a change of attitude, how we look at things, how we look at people, how we Look at ourselves, even if we are 100 years old. It's like I was briefly watching, my son and I, we were watching uh, an interview uh, on CNN this morning with a woman, she was, lives in Manhattan. She's 101, 
a funky looking lady. She was out in front of a bakery, her favorite bakery, bakery on Manhattan Island, and she had this hat, this funny hat with a band around it uh, that says vote, vote, vote. And she had a scarf that had uh, American symbols on it and USA. And it, it was, she was, and then she had a walker, you know, and she had a whole school of people around her. And she was talking about the importance of voting. And as I was watching this funky little lady, 101 years old, who has so much joy, that's beauty. But before I saw her beauty, I saw the funky hat, you know, and the vote. And, and afterwards, she broke down and cried. She was so, she's so uh, intensely involved with wanting people to get out and vote in this United States uh, that she puts herself out there and she stood in line, you know, to, to vote. And that's beauty. That's beauty. The mysteries reveal to us a mystery of beauty, to, and it's important to gradually make the human nature used to it because they knew that the revelation of high, the high voltage of beauty could increase the glamours and vanities of the subject if it is not approached slowly and gradually. Without gradually introducing people to the whole um, vast concept of the principle of beauty, it can create cleavages in a person's nature, increase glamours and vanities. So ample time is needed to help them transform their nature. The whole life and the whole series of lives are gradually preparation for the revelation of individual, planetary, solar, galactic, and cosmic beauty. On each level, the glory of beauty will increase. It is a time to prepare ourselves to see more beauty to be more beauty, because the only path home is the path of beauty. The other day I was meditating with a group of, small group of people online, co-workers. We were contemplating the image of the burning of darkness. I noticed in Rourke's painting that there was an understated symbol of the constellation of Orion. The three stars of the belt of Orion, these stars are sometimes called the three magi. And if you're not familiar with this painting called The Burning of Darkness, just Google it. The Burning of Darkness by Nicholas Rourke and a half a dozen you know, replicas of his painting will come up. There's a legend about a special stone that came to Earth from the constellation of Orion. In, or in Rourke's paintings, the three stars of Orion are aligned with the casket in the painting, a stone that a great one is carrying in such a way that it closely coincides with the position of the star Sirius relative to the Orion constellation. So in my meditation, I began to think about Orion and Sirius and the legend of the stone. Soon the image of the great bear came into my thoughts, the seven stars of the great bear, and how Rourke subtly included the seven main stars of the great bear in the painting of the mother of the world, right over there. 
cosmic beauty. Beauty is a means to come in contact with the superhuman spheres. This is what the master says. So here is this master painter trying to subtly introduce us to the beauty of cosmos. Isn't that something? The creative power of the universe is beauty. In every beauty, the creative power manifests itself. The whole universe is the expression of beauty. In our deepest essence, we are beauty. Your salvation is to manifest beauty. The seed must flower and bloom and you in all your expressions will then be beautiful. You exist only in the beauty that you express. Unless you express beauty, you do not exist in its expression. Unless you express beauty, you do not exist in its expression. A co-worker sent me some photos of her grandson the other day. This young child, this young, so very young boy, was in bliss eating a snack of beets and okra and peppers right out of his parents' garden. I've seen other photos of this little one as well, always present in his parents' garden, and he was in such bliss. I've never seen anything like it. You know, this little, it wasn't um, Twizzlers or whatever, the, you know, I can't think of all these different candies the kids love. He was in bliss over this snack of beets and beans and okra, and you just, he just radiated joy and beauty. That child in his innocence radiated beauty. A Sufi teacher told a dear co-worker that every time we go onto a bus or the subway, we should look at each passenger. No matter how superficially ugly or offensive a person may seem, he said to peer beneath the surface and find the eternal beauty that exists in everyone. The teaching tells us that the master himself may come to our door in the guise of a filthy beggar and that we must learn to recognize him by seeing beyond the disguise and by ignoring the surface appearance. When the teaching uses the triad, love, beauty, and action, this is the kind of beauty that is meant. There can be no positive motion in the universe without the impelling power and sustaining power of love and beauty. In the Agni Yoga Quarterly publication, there is a section called Conversations with Daniel. In one of those issues, he says this about beauty. Now, Beauty is such an immense thing that I have worked all of my life trying to understand it. We chew our way around the edges of the concept and try to enrich our lives by learning to love beautiful things, to collect them, and to see the beauty in nature. But we try our damnedest to ignore its opposite. That is wonderful. But, he said, we are dealing with beauty, which is only the superficial aspect of beauty, the sustaining power of the universe. And that, he said, I think is what I was trying to imply, that we have hardly an inkling of what that great power beyond all imagining can be. We really have to devote our lives 
to learning to gain small glimpses of it. And even those glimpses put us in awe to a degree that we have never experienced before. Beauty with a small b is recognized by most people already. That is why they like to look good, to fix up nice homes, to collect nice things according to their notion of what is beautiful and to give beautiful gifts. What they do not know about is the greater beauty, beauty that, the beauty that lies behind the phenomenon of all life. And to quote Daniel one more time, he says, as a photographer, I took that idea of my Sufi teacher to another realm. I began collecting the ugly things that one finds in the gutter, in the garbage. I put them in front of my camera in the studio and tried to find the beauty in each thing amazing discoveries. After all, everything that exists is a product of the laws of the universe, and those laws are an expression of beauty. As we become more beautiful, we become closer to the creative power. The teaching gives us the component parts of beauty, which are light, inclusiveness, power, freedom, unity, harmony, rhythm, equilibrium, contrast, expansion, or space, meaning, and direction. Those are all the components that the teaching is giving us that say formulate the parts of beauty. So I'm going to take these component parts and share just a little bit about each of them. Starting with light. Beauty enlightens. It's, it's like that meditation. Honest to God, I've, I mean, I know about the burning of darkness and the, the history behind that painting and and I've looked at it for years, but I, it was, for the first time, I saw these three stars, the belt of Orion. And as I'm meditating with these beautiful co-workers, all of a sudden I realized that these three stars were pointing to the casket, which is this box that was carrying the stone. This box carrying the stone represents the future the evolution of life, infinity. And then that gave way to recognizing, wait a minute, Orion and Sirius. These three stars, all you have to do is go out and look at the sky. More around the month of July, but in August. But realizing in my, you know, meditative consciousness, Sirius, so look at this painter is doing, you know, expanding our consciousness, and then somehow magically I was thinking about the mother of the world and the great bear and the seven stars of the great bear. That's what it means that beauty enlightens. See that beauty enlightens. Beauty expands our consciousness. It helps us to understand and see things as they are. Beauty multiplies, light multiplies our viewpoints and increases the light of intuition, insight, and foresight. Beauty harmonizes our mental equipment. Harmony in our mind creates light. Energy, love, and light emerge when there is unity in our nature. Synchronization releases light, energy, and love within our nature. A beautiful person is called a person of integrity. That 101-year-old funky-looking woman in Manhattan was a person of integrity. 
is a person of integrity. Beauty synchronizes and unifies our nature and raises our level to the level on which the beauty was conceived. Inclusiveness, there is no beauty if there is no inclusiveness. Inclusiveness radiating out through beauty creates a sense of unity. It also creates attraction, magnetism, and helps the process of integrating our threefold personality. Think of the unity I discovered in Nicholas Rourke's paintings. Linking the light, the beauty of his artistry with cosmos. And, and it's, like, it's like all of these ideas started coming together that I know about. It's like, okay, we know that the abode of the cosmic magnet is Orion. See, so, so instead of thinking during that meditative experience with my co-workers about beauty, I could have been thinking, I've got to get to the pet store this afternoon or the dogs won't have anything to eat tonight. I mean, there's nothing beautiful in that idea. <laughs> But at the end of that meditation, I jumped in the car and I drove down to the pet headquarters and got the dog food and felt really good about it. Because I was so not anchored to what I had to do in this world. You know, get dog food. I was so tired of going down the street or around the block, depending on whether those bulldozers are there or not, to get their food. It's like, this is so, so incredibly wonderful. Unity, inclusiveness, attraction, magnetism, and fusion. That's what beauty gives us through inclusiveness. Power is another component of beauty. There is no real beauty if there is no power or strength within that object. That object could be yourself. It could be your family. It could be a head of state. There is no true power or strength without beauty. Power radiating out through beauty energizes our system, brings in inspiration, higher impressions. It in increases our psychic energy. It gives us a sense of daring and courage and striving. It helps us to have self-control, a sacrificial spirit. It was a humbling experience to see the essence of magnificence of Rourke's paintings and their relationship to the cosmos. Even when you look at, well, not with St. Sergius here, but you look at, the, we have a painting in the back. I think it's called She Who Leads. And the whole background of this painting is a mountain that takes us up. If you watch that mountain, it's going to take your vision, your consciousness, to the stars. That's power. It was a humbling experience. It was like for a moment I was totally fused with cosmos through the beauty of Rourke's paintings. And in that fusion, I could feel the power of beauty. Freedom. Freedom is a component of beauty. Beauty gives us freedom. It makes us free from the limitations of time. It gives us freedom from conditions and circumstances and religions and dogmas and doctrines. It cannot hinder our steps and create a slave out of us. Beauty gives way to freedom. Beauty creates a free interplay between ourselves and nature. 
Think of that young small boy, totally concentrated on his street, eating a beet. He wasn't concerned that he was going to be red and his, he was going to have a red tongue. <laughs> eating a beet right out of his parents' magnificent garden. The love and labor of making such a garden to feed the best of nature in that young one. This is a memory he will never forget. The nourishment and beauty that nature provides. Unity is another component. Harmony is another. Rhythm. Rhythm can be defined as a cycle of change in which a higher spiral opens with similar beginnings but with greater meaning and space. That's rhythm. Expansion is a very secret part of beauty which breaks our mental or emotional limitations. Expansion is a very secret part of beauty. It makes us feel free, detached, and uplifted. It is through expansion that we contact new levels of awareness, new sources of inspiration and guidance. For example, during the years, my teacher, a great sage, slowly, slowly gave me guidance in ways that even today his guidance continues. It continues to make me, to take me to new levels of awareness. And in that awareness, I become receptive to great sources of inspiration. See that, I didn't even realize that. Over those 17 years I studied with him, he was breaking my limitations through the various elements and aspects of guidance that he gave me, from discipline to beauty to building a sense of integrity and letting go of dogma and doctrine and pain and suffering and all those things that the world tries to enslave us with. His guidance today, I still, you know, that awareness he gave me, he opened the door of beauty in such a way that my consciousness is now in a state of continual expansion. We have other components. Uh, meaning with, within beauty is the nourishment of our soul. The meaning within beauty is the nourishment of our soul. Equilibrium. Beauty brings a sense of stabilization between our outer life and our inner life, our mundane life and our spiritual life. That's equilibrium that beauty gives us. Direction, direction is the vision. Any beauty must have a direction. That direction evokes the future and establishes in our mind a sense of continuous striving toward the future. I'm jumping through some things here. Um, Beauty on the mental plane is created in the higher centers. I thought this was important to bring to our attention about the culture of beauty. Beauty on the mental plane is created in the higher centers. When higher centers are inspired by great ideas and affirmed by our human soul, the higher centers produce beauty. Every true idea in tune with the direction of the cosmic magnet inspires our higher centers and urges them to creative activity. Thinking is the circulation of light through the spark in our lotus. Okay. 
Let me close with this. This is so cool. We must develop a large aura. Isn't that cool? <laughs> we must develop a large aura. How do we do this? Through pure thought, pure motive. Pure thought and pure motive to serve so that our aura protects the mechanism of our brain and the mental body from interrupting currents. Meditation is one of the best means to build such an aura. Sacrificial service builds a shield in the aura which rejects all the darts of dark forces. For those of us that live in the United States and we had this magnificent president, or not everybody believes this, but spiritual people do, of how blessed we were to have President Obama and his wife. And inevitably, when we were sitting, engaging in a discussion about what the Obama family was like and bringing those little doggies, you know, into the White House and, and, and creating a garden, you know, in the gardens or in the grounds of the White House. And we talked more about the things they were doing rather than the politics of their party. And then we saw all the attacks. From the day, that first day, he took the oath of office of the presidency, attacks began. He couldn't get things done. And we kept saying, how can he survive this? And still have a sense of humor. Uh, I remember the, I don't remember what funeral, it was probably John McCain when <clears throat> he was asked to give the eulogy and he sang Amazing Grace. You know, why it seemingly the whole world in this country, the United States was attacking this man, he's sing, singing Amazing Grace. The answer is sacrificial service builds a shield in the aura which rejects all the darts of darkness. And there's our answer of how they are still alive and beautiful and still influencing and inspiring, you know, people outside of politics. Sometimes our thoughts are interrupted by a powerful message that may be coming to us from higher sources. Sometimes the message is interrupted by currents that are running in space. There are currents more powerful than radio waves. These are currents coming from great constellations or lives. In such moment, the current coming from higher sources is interrupted. Though the message often is not completed or understood, the energy it carries stays. It stays with the one who is in contact with the message. I've just kind of threw this in here as an idea. I didn't have time to develop it. Um, but th this is what happens is that you are inspired with a great idea. And you know that this idea is it is not possible to manifest or to put into form that idea because of various reasons. Usually the reason being, if this idea or this message from the tower is given to you and you remember it and you hold that energy, you're going to take it with you into your next lifetime and it will become part of the purpose of your life in your next life. So if you receive a great idea, a great idea, whether it is coming from a constellation or the, a life like Sana Kamara or the Tower of Shambhala, 
Just remember that this is something given to you by your own hands and feet. You're going to bring it into manifestation. You've been given a vision. And it just isn't possible. See, because why, why would you be given a vision? I'm going to go over time. <laughs> why would you be given a vision if you can't put it into manifestation right now? Because Shambhala, because hierarchy and these stations of space, like the abode of the cosmic magnet being in the constellation of Orion, it's timeless. See, there is no time there, but we were ready. See, our consciousness is ready, is receptive. And so we were inspired with this plan that was sent. And if society is not yet ready, it will be in our next life. And we must carry it into the next life. And it becomes part of our life vision. Okay. I think I'll end with this. Every time we come in contact with beauty, we absorb in our aura a great deal of energy. Okay, isn't that amazing? Yeah, I just, we are so honored to have the teaching to learn from and these great beings that sacrifice their lives to bring the teaching to us. So when, when somebody tells you, you know, I can't really say anything about this stuff to my friends because they're not going to understand it. You take a lecture like this today on the subject of beauty and you give it to them and you're giving them the teaching. So, you know, cut out such stupid thinking. You're saying, I can't give the teaching to my friends. They are not going to understand it. They will understand this most of it.